sisters. I'm uh, happy to be with you today uh, via this uh, digital connection. And uh, let me just uh, introduce myself to you. My name is Brett Selby. I work with Oklahoma Baptists. I work uh, for Oklahoma Baptists. So uh, that includes yourselves. And uh, I am the regional ministry partner in the southwest region of the church and uh, your pastor brother bill has been a friend of mine for many years um, uh, he frequently uh, gives me opportunities to serve and to uh, minister there at indian falls creek and i'm always happy to do so and uh, grateful for his friendship and grateful to be able to fill in for him honored and humbled to fill in for him so um, i'm gonna be your uh, video preacher for i think two sundays and so i want to just kind of uh, lead you through a mini uh, sermon series that i'm calling uh, walking god's path through suffering and so today is going to be uh, part one and then uh, the next uh, message will be uh, part two. So I want to read a passage of scripture to you from uh, the Gospel of John, and it's uh, found in John chapter 16, verses 25 through 33. And uh, so you follow along in your Bibles as, uh, as I read this passage uh, aloud, and then we will see what the Lord will uh, say to us today through it. John chapter 16, beginning in verse 25. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now 
You are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered each to his own home and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this passage from your word. We pray now that uh, you would speak to us through it, through the Holy Spirit. Help us to understand your will and purpose for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want us to think about walking, get through, walking God's path through suffering. The Lord has a path for us as we enter into suffering. And of course, suffering is a very relevant uh, topic for us today. Um, we have gone through a extremely difficult year that would represent, could be called suffering. And, um, and that's just true of all of us. It's amazing how this pandemic has affected and influenced, complicated so many lives, even people who, who have not contracted the virus. Um, so there, there, is, there is suffering, uh, our suffering in that sense, but life is just full of suffering. And I know that some of you who are listening to me now uh, are in the middle of suffering, have been suffering. If you're not suffering now, at some point you will. So uh, it's an extremely relevant topic for us. And it's a path, suffering is a path that we're often called upon to travel. But here's, here's the issue. As we walk this path of suffering, we need to remember that there are ditches on both sides of the road, that we can get off in the ditch and find ourselves not moving forward with the Lord and not moving forward in our faith. Years ago, I had a, a boss and uh, my job at that time was very similar to what it is right now. My job involved traveling all over the state of Oklahoma, and so I would call my boss and we would be talking and he would frequently conclude the conversation because he knew I was driving everywhere and, and he prayed for my safety. And he would often conclude the conversation by saying, hey, Brett, keep it between the ditches out there. Well, that's what we have to do when we walk God's path in suffering. We have to watch and not wind up in a ditch on either side of the road. I want you to notice that something that Jesus said in verse 33. He said, in the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Now, those are two things that we might see as being contradictory. We might look at those two things when Jesus says, listen, you're going to suffer in the world. And then on the other hand, he says, I've overcome the world. We might be tempted to see a conflict between those two things. But in fact, Jesus says both of these things are true. So keeping both of these things true in our minds is how we stay on the path that God has for us to walk through suffering. But there are ditches on either side of this path. And here's one ditch. One ditch says this, listen, I'm suffering. I'm going through tribulation. So I guess that Jesus didn't overcome the world. There's a lot of unbelieving people that hold to this view. And um, there is just, you know, in their, in their uh, estimation, well, the world is just a random, it's just a chaotic place. 
and uh, you're really kind of on your own. See, they don't have the belief that Jesus is in charge. They don't have the belief that he has overcome the world, that he that the victory is his. And so their perspective, they're in the ditch that says, listen, you're you just there's trouble in the world and um, you just you just have to get through it under your own under your own strength and your own power. But there's another ditch, and this ditch is found among people who claim to be Christians, and, and I assume they are Christians. But here's the ditch that they fall into. They say, well, because Jesus has overcome the world, there's no tribulation. These are the people who say, listen, if you are truly uh, a child of God, and if you will just trust him and have faith in him, listen, you'll always have, uh, you'll have great material wealth. You'll never get sick. You'll always be healthy. Uh, your life will just be uh, just full of blessings and never any challenges. But Jesus says, hey, no, both of these things are true. In the world, you'll have tribulation. I have conquered the world. So Jesus affirms them both. So what we have to do as we live our lives, we have to stay on God's path and stay out of those ditches, falling into believing those things where we have this lack of assurance or we have a lack of empathy. You see, if you believe that Christians, good Christians never have problems, then when you see people who are Christians with problems, then you don't have empathy with them. This is not what the Lord has for us. So how do we stay on God's path through suffering? And how do we stay out of the ditches? Well, there's two things. And the first one is you always start with the truth. You always start with the truth. In verse 28, we find there in just one verse, Jesus states for us, Four very important, just I would say cardinal Christian doctrines. He says, I came from the Father. And we when we see in other places, when we find this phrase that Jesus comes from the Father, what it means is, is that Jesus has always been with the Father. He's pre-existed from the, uh, before time and before creation from God. He is one with the Father. So when Jesus says, I came from the Father, it's an affirmation of his pre-existence and his deity. He says, I came from the Father and have come into the world. So that is the doctrine of the incarnation, that Jesus, that this eternal word became flesh and dwelt among us. But he continues, he goes on and says, and now I am leaving the world. Leaving the world is an expression to denote that of his, his death and his sacrifice. So the third Christian doctrine that we see in verse 28 is the death and sacrifice of Jesus. But then he says, I am now leaving the world and going to the Father. So that's the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus to the right hand of God the Father. So you have in one verse these four Christian essential doctrines and Jesus follows up with that, and he says, Now I have said these things to you. These things. These things that are true. I have said these things to you, that in me you might have peace. We are going through suffering. And you see all around you people who are in great upheaval. People who are incredibly anxious people who seem to be all their very lives and their minds and their emotions are in an uproar. Peace, which Jesus promises to us. He says, in me, you will have peace because I have said these things to you. Peace is based on truth. Truth about Jesus Christ. 
Now, I know some people will say, well, you know, truth is relative. Truth is what you make it out to be. Well, listen, friend, if truth isn't possible, then neither is peace. And that's why so many people in this world don't have peace. That's why they can never be content is because they believe that truth just is, is a matter of each person's opinion. But there is truth. Jesus gives us that truth. And as we're going through suffering, it is important to remember this axiom. I've heard this said many times and always found it to be true. And the maxim, the, 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 the expression is this. Always remember in the dark what you learned in the light. When God teaches you something and you know it's true about him, you have to remember that when you're walking through times of darkness down God's path through suffering. So the first thing, <clears throat> Jesus says, always start with the truth. And the disciples, they respond in verse 29. And, and basically what the disciples say in verse 29 is they say, oh, yes. Now, yes, Lord, we get it. We get it. We're smart guys. We understand all this. And Jesus has to burst their bubble, if you will. Uh, because he says in verse 31, because they say, we, we know these things. We know that you know all things. And we believe that you came from God. And Jesus, verse 31, Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Jesus is questioning whether or not what they have learned in the light they will remember in the dark. He says, listen, you say you believe, but within hours, just a few hours, you won't use what you know to be true in suffering. It's, it's not the first time that he's challenged them like this. You remember when he was with his disciples on the Sea of Galilee? And the storm came up and the boat was about to sink. And they said, Lord, don't you even care that we're about to perish? And Jesus got up and he said to the storm, peace, be still. And then he turned to the disciples and he said, where is your faith? He didn't say to them, you guys don't even believe. He didn't say that to him. He said, "This your faith, where is it? It's, you're not bringing it to bear on this situation. And that's what belief is. And that's, that's the second thing I want to say to you today. The first thing is you always start with the truth. And the second thing I want to say to you is bring what you know to be true into the battle. As you walk through, as you walk down the path of suffering, you, you, you stay out of the ditches by bringing what you know to be true into the battle. When trouble comes, when, not if, when trouble comes, Jesus says, listen, he says in verse th the last part of verse 33, he says, but take heart, take heart. That word, that phrase, take heart, sometimes it's translated, be courageous, show some courage. You believe these things, now act as if you believe them. Um, that word there that's used for take heart, it's just one word in the original language, and it's a, a word that at its root means to dare. I mean, that's what courage is. Courage is taking a dare, right? Courage is 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 uh, uh, doing something bold. Uh, Jesus says, "Listen, I dare you to bring what you believe into the battle, into." 
this suffering. Because you see, when people get off in the ditch, when they just believe part of what Jesus said, they're not daring. It's a step of faith. It's, it takes a little bit of courage to bring what you to believe, what you know is true, that Jesus is God that Jesus came into this world and lived the life that we also live, to believe that Jesus died as our sacrifice, which assures us that God loves us, and to believe that because he lives, we'll live also, and to believe that this life, this suffering, is not the end of the story. I think really there's two things that we have to dare. First of all, we have to dare to be obedient. Um, you know, lots of suffering in this life. Some of the suffering that you are going through right now have, have really just was not anything in any way related to anything that you've done. But there are times in our lives as Christians that we suffer because of our obedience. You do what the Lord tells you to do, and then you suffer as a result of that. Being honest sometimes at work causes suffering because someone doesn't like the fact that you were honest and that maybe exposed something that was wrong and was not just. And so now, as a result, you're starting to suffer some because of that. Uh, sometimes we suffer because we won't settle in relationships. The Lord tells us in our close relationships, the relationships of uh, marriage, the cl those close relationships, the, the Bible tells us to, to be married to people of like-minded faith. And, but sometimes we settle. We get nervous. We're afraid we won't find anyone to marry. And so we settle for less. Sometimes when it comes to personal purity, um, it's, it takes courage to be obedient because the rest of the world is going the opposite direction. Be courageous. Jesus says, be courageous and be, and be bold enough to bring what you know to be true into the battle. Remember, we always start with the truth and then remember that we bring what we know to be true into the battle. And so part of that is daring to be obedient. Part of it is daring to trust God's love in suffering. To believe that even when I suffer, God still loves me. He's not taking his eye off me. He is not angry with me. Dare to trust God's love in suffering. You know who, you know what kind of Christian has the most trouble with suffering? Is the person whom I call a legalist. And you know what I mean by a legalist. A legalist is that person who says, I'm going to keep the rules. I'm going to keep all the rules. And because I keep the rules, because of my effort, because of my performance, God has to love me because I did what he told me to do. The, a legalist has a lot of trouble when they suffer because they're thinking to themselves, hey, wait a minute. I kept all the rules. Now, why? Am I going through this hard situation? I have earned an exemption. God, if he, God should love me enough to keep me from having to suffer. And as I wrap up here, let me just say the problem with that rationale is this. And this is what the gospel teaches us, is that the person who least deserved suffering endured more of it than anyone who has ever lived. And of course, I am speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When Jesus says to us, listen, be courageous. 
dare to trust in God's love through suffering. When he tells us this, he speaks out of his own experience because nobody was more obedient than Jesus. Jesus was perfect in his obedience. And yet he suffered more than you or I will ever suffer because not only did he suffer physical pain, which is extremely challenging, Jesus suffered all of the wrath of God poured out on him, the sins of the world that he bore as our sacrifice. And so this person who least deserves suffering, but suffered more of it than anyone, this person tells us something. He says, don't separate suffering and the fact of my triumph. He said, in the world, you'll have tribulation, but take heart. I've overcome the world. You see, it's that suffering of his that brings the triumph. Because he suffered for us on the cross, we now can live triumphantly. We can live victoriously over suffering. So as we walk God's path through suffering, we remember that we are not alone. Jesus said to the disciples, you're gonna leave me alone, but I'm not alone. God is with me. Jesus was left alone, humanly speaking, so that you and I never have to walk alone. This is the good news that we have in Christ Jesus. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you today that it is true that while we suffer in this world, you, your triumph, your victory, is still true. And so, Lord, we rest in that today. And we rest in the hope that because of your resurrection and because you sit at the right hand of God the Father, we have the Holy Spirit in our lives to guide us, to strengthen us as we walk through this life. And someday at your return, we will be raised forever to celebrate and to love you. And we pray in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen.